Hi students, I'm here to talk to you today about pitchers. Pitchers are great multitasking workhorse forms of the studio of the kitchen and we love to make them in ceramics. A pitcher of this size is really great for fresh squeeze orange juice in the morning. Something smaller you can put maple syrup in and warm up. A low wide pitcher could have gravy or salad dressing next to a big salad at a potluck. Sometimes we make more narrow pitchers that fit perfectly inside the refrigerator and hold your cold water whenever you need it or juice. And of course, pitchers always look beautiful with a bouquet of fresh flowers in them when they're not being used for food. So talking about form with pitchers, you have a couple options. Um, you could do a classic curvy pitcher with a spout and a high handle. You can have something that's uh, a little bit straighter, wider at the base for stability, more like a classic milk pitcher. Um, big wide pitcher with a heavy rim is a good for a batter bowl to mix up pancake batter, muffin batter, that kind of thing. Um, and a tall, thin, more elegant pitcher. This is really nice for cool liquids like water um, or tall juices that are thinner iced tea. And those you can easily just place right into the, the refrigerator. A classic form that you all know that is actually not a very good, very useful form is your Kool-Aid pitcher. I know this is what you are all thinking about, but this is not a good form. This has too much volume and too short of a neck to be able to handle the pouring of that much liquid. So even though it's cute and nostalgic, it's not really a useful form. So let's make a useful pitcher form. So I'm gonna center my ball of clay and shape it into a cylinder. I'm gonna seal it up to the wheel head, get my hands really wet, and cone this clay up. and bring it back down again. I'm using about two pounds of clay here. This is a good size for a pitcher. Two pounds of clay should give you between three and four liquid cups of whatever you want, orange juice, cranberry juice, margaritas, I really like to make pitchers, and I really think that they're wonderful forms. I use my pitchers in my house a lot that are this size because I like to use a pour over coffee instrument object and I pour it right into a pitcher and then that's how I make my coffee in the morning. And then if I don't use all the coffee, I just take the pitcher and put it in the refrigerator for iced coffee in the afternoon. So my form is really centered. I'm gonna open up my form, my ball of clay here. I'm gonna stop, check the depth, make sure I'm at a half an inch, looking good. And since I'm making a form that's taller, I don't want this to be flared out and wide. Now I'm gonna spread my floor just a little bit, about two inches. And I'm gonna pull my clay up into a cylinder. Now, grabbing again with my left hand, left fingers on the inside, right fingers on the outside, and I'm working at four o'clock. I'm gonna grab and squeeze the clay and just do a real easy little pull at first. Compress my rim.
grab from the bottom and now pull your clay straight up. You're trying to make a taller, more narrow cylinder that you can then shape. In the next video, I'm going to show you alternative ways to make a spout because there's a couple different spouts you can make with a pitcher form. Today, we're going to pull one right on the on the cylinder here. So now I'm going to collar this in, get a little water on my cylinder, grab and gently choke my form so that my hands are like this around the form. I hold them very still. I use a lot of water on the outside and I collar in my clay. This is a useful technique if you get a little wide. Okay, I'm gonna make one more pull from the bottom so that I have a nice thin cylinder here. Pitchers, because they hold so much liquid, can get very heavy very quickly. So you wanna make sure that your forms are thin and light so that way they can take the weight and the volume of whatever liquid you put in them. I'm gonna compress my lip here and now I'm gonna shape my pitcher. I've got a subtle shape here, but I want a little roundness in the body to create volume. The way that I do this is I use my metal rib and I like to bend this and use it as a template to press the clay into. So I round out my form by pressing it into a rounded rib. And this way I can get a little bit of nice volume, a pneumatic feel to the form. And then I can use the curve side straight on to define the neck of the pitcher. I don't cramp the neck in really far because then that would stop the flow of the liquid out the top. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna think about things being ergonomic and having nice flow. A Little bit of collaring, compress my lip. Everything's nice and soft, looks good. Take my wooden stick, trim away the extra clay from the bottom. Now I'm gonna stop my wheel and create my spout. It's very specific how we make spouts, pulled spouts on pitchers. And the way that you do it is you want to push in more than you yank the clay out. So to make a pitcher spout, you wanna take your left hand and create a C shape with your fingers nice and wide. You wanna make sure that your fingers are wet and that your index finger of your right hand is wet. You wanna push into the clay into the rim to create a spout shape. And then you wanna take your index finger and wiggle the spout open so that it has a nice directional pour for the liquid. What a lot of beginners do is they start to close their fingers up and they don't even realize that they're doing it. And then this space gets really small and sharp. You want your spout to be really round and generous and open so that when you pour, your pitcher pours really nicely. Okay, students, we'll trim this in a little bit.